Hello everyone and welcome to Fun To Be Free. Today's journey brings us to Epcot to take a cruise on Living With The Land boat ride. Coming up next. Hey Explorers, John with Fun To Be Free, inviting you to follow me as we discover fun together. Let's go. We're here at Epcot. Discover the history of farming edible food crops from around the world cruise past greenhouses and the aquacell on a boat tour. Then, watch horticulturists in the greenhouses the living laboratory use innovative growing techniques to help feed a growing planet. We're near the main entrance, in the neighborhood of World Celebration. We're gonna head over to World Nature to see the Land Pavilion and inside take a cruise on Living With The Land boat ride. We've made it! Let's walk up this gentle incline to the automatic doors. Living with the Land Boat Ride is located inside the Land Pavilion in World Nature. This pavilion is also home to the attractions Soarin' Around the World and the Awesome Planet. Let's descend down this bridge to the escalator. At Sunshine Seasons, harvest the goodness of the greenhouses of the Land Pavilion. From sun up to sun down, dig into a bountiful selection of fresh, flavorful fare. Now let's follow this pathway around the corner to the left to a quick service dining experience. On the far side is the dessert section. Let's go there. Let's take a look at the menu and see what items they have to curb my sweet tooth. Sunshine Seasons offers desserts like a lemon chiffon, a mini chocolate bunt cake, a plant-based cookies and cream chocolate mousse cup, a strawberry shortcake, turtle brownie, a chocolate chip cookie, and an M&M sugar cookie. Let's walk past the register apps and around the corner to the right-hand side to our main attraction. Living with the land boat ride. There's the lightning lane, and on the opposite side is the standby entrance. That's for us today. Let's join the queue.
enjoy living with the land. Por su seguridad, permanezca sentado con sus manos y brazos, pies y piernas dentro del barco y cuida a los pecanitos. A manera de recordatorio, no tomar fotos con flash y luz de video antes de llegar a mi gandero. Welcome to a voyage of discovery and awareness of the richness, the diversity, the often surprising nature of living with the land. Our journey begins as dramatic and sudden changes are sweeping over the land. The approaching storm may seem violent and destructive to us, but to nature, it's a new beginning in the cycle of life. The surface of the land roots trap water from the flowing mud, extracting precious nutrients and minerals. These elements, when combined with sunlight, create the diverse living systems of our planet. One of those living systems is the rainforest, home to the most amazing concentration of life on our planet. These dense and beautiful forests cover only a tiny portion of the Earth's surface, but they contain more than half of its plant and animal species. Rainforests are also extremely rich and productive living systems, providing us with oxygen, food, medicine, and other elements essential to our lives. In the desert, nature has created a very different, but no less beautiful, living system. And while this arid landscape may seem lifeless, it is very much alive. The plants and animals that have learned to survive in these harsh conditions make use of what little water they can find and avoid the scorching rays of the relentless sun. The American prairie once appeared as desolate as the desert, but over time, rainwater and nutrients gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Even the hooves of the mighty buffalo helped create the rich soil that would one day become home to the American farm. Today, we 
we're learning to live with the land, discovering better ways to grow food that will assure both human and environmental well-being. scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests now and into the future. The tropics are home to the greatest diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee and rice, are well known around the world. These are just a few of the edible plants that have been an important source of nutrition for people living in the tropics. Many are rich in vitamins and minerals, while others are well adapted to growing in less than ideal conditions. Some, like the water lily, thrive in wet, swampy areas and waterways. All parts of this plant, even the flower petals, are edible. The starchy root of the plant has long been used to make flour for baking. One day, many of these lesser-known tropical plants may be as important as the bananas growing on both sides of the boat. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world. species in the world, most of us are only familiar with the handful that make up our everyday diet. The common grains growing here, 
wheat, maize, sorghum, and millet, plus rice, account for nearly two-thirds of our global food consumption. Learning how to increase yields of these staples is an important goal of research around the world. These plants are definitely on their way up. Innovative growing techniques like these increase yields while more efficiently using resources like water, fertilizer, and pesticides. Another innovation at work here is our integrated pest management program. By populating our greenhouses with beneficial insects that prey on harmful pests like aphids and flies, we are significantly reducing our reliance on conventional pesticides. We're growing these crops using our nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. With it, we can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. Some of our best ideas have been inspired by nature, like these fruit and vegetable trees. By growing these ground plants vertically, we can increase yields and better control diseases. These crops taste as good as they look. In fact, we serve more than 15 tons of produce from our greenhouses in restaurants here at the land every year. The future of agriculture may include innovative ideas like this vertical growing system. Plants grown in this way use a fraction of the space required by traditional growing methods. That saves water and increases production. The aquaponics system on your left combines hydroponics with aquaculture. The fish provide a natural source of fertilizer for the plants and the plants help keep the water clean for the fish. It's another great way to produce more while using less. In our lab, Epcot scientists are working with the U.S. Department of Agriculture on a number of innovative projects. The goal of these efforts is to produce higher yielding and better quality plants. These greenhouses represent just a fraction of the work being done worldwide to produce bountiful harvests for our growing population. Scientists, farmers, and even backyard gardeners are doing their part to improve the quantity and quality of foods that we all rely upon. Together, we can continue to find more ways to increase food production and protect our precious natural environment. Only then will we truly be living with the land.
let's go up the escalator. To walk up the gentle bridge, go through the automatic doors, and back outside. It's time now to head back to the main entrance. Follow me. We're back. There's a time shift in the space-time continuum. Here we are, back at the main entrance again. We've come full circle, but sadly, our journey's come to an end. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your tour of living with the land just as much as I have creating it for you. With that being said, remember to click subscribe, smash that like button, and ring that notification bell for future channel updates. Also, follow me on Instagram and Patreon. Until next time, see you later, explorers.